Joining me is Mike Moffat, who's a retired Marine Corps veteran and an author. Mike, um, let, let's continue our conversation. It, you were in civilian life, uh, having served in the military, then you went into the reservists, and then Operation Desert Storm. Were you happy to get called up? Yeah, I was. It's kind of interesting, John, because uh, I had got off of active duty and, and I missed the Marines, as it turned out. And uh, eventually, I, well, I was working at Plymouth State University, Plymouth State College, as sports information director. And this opportunity for a command billet opened up in Maine in an area that I had some background in, so I was interested in it. And so what's, just, I'm not a technical guy, so what's a command billet? Uh, commanding officer, the, the commanding officer of a reserve unit oh, okay, okay. In, in, uh, in Maine, actually. Okay. So I went to my boss uh, at the time, and I, of course, as SID, Sports Information Director, you have football games on weekends and games uh, constantly. It's Basketball big, games, uh, hockey yeah. games, yes. field hockey games. You, you, every sport needs to be covered. Yes, and there's a lot of weekend stuff, so there was some concern about missing that, but we figured out a way that I could, could cover that. And then the last thing he said to me, he says, well, we'll try to support that, but you're not going to go to, like, any wars. And, and you said, of course not. There, this was, Things are calm. This was Jan <laughs> yes, it was, uh, the Berlin, Berlin Wall had just come down. This was January of 1990. So, oh my we, gosh. Were, we were talking about a peace dividend. Absol absolutely. So, and even in Vietnam, the reserve, Marine reservists were, were hardly used. So the notion of, of uh, before 1990 was over, I'd be in uniform, dug in in the dirt south of Kuwait, uh, waiting to invade. Uh, oh my gosh, uh, who would have ever thought that? Uh, did I mind? I, I, I'm a Marine. I was thrilled. I, I wanted to ride to the sound of the guns, and uh, especially as a commanding officer of a, of a, a unit, a reserve unit from Maine. Uh, great responsibility there. Uh, I loved it. I was thrilled. Uh, it, that war got over very quickly. Uh, we were right in the oil fields and mm -hmm. uh, in the dirt. Uh, I always remember convoying through Kuwait City uh, shortly after the ceasefire and uh, having these these huge crowds of Kuwaitis come. There was no electricity in the city, and there was, uh, you know, the occasional dead body and shell holes, and and the, the people came out and welcomed us with love and appreciation as liberators. And as a history person who had was aware of the liberation of Paris and, and Rome in 1944. Uh, in 1991, at age 35, to be uh, the object of this love and ad adulation as liberators of the people of Kuwait was uh, an incredible thrill that I'll always remember. Was it easy for the people, the other people that served under you, to make adjustment to uh, Operation Desert Storm as reservists, or were there challenges? Uh, Everybody's different. Uh, some, I think, like me, uh, were ha very happy to be there. And there were a couple of, uh, a real quick uh, anecdote, there's uh, Lance Corporal Hilton did not want to be in Kuwait. He said, I joined the reserves. I, I didn't, uh, you know, I didn't know I was, they're going to send me over here to get maybe killed. And yet this convoy that I just described, I always remember Lance Corporal Hilton. He took his helmet off and put on an Arab head a kafia, whatever they call it. And uh, he was waving to these crowds. It's like a rock star moment. And uh, he uh, turned to me during this convoy through Kuwait City and said, sir, this is great. I love it. I'm going to re-enlist. So he's somebody who hated it, didn't want to be there, and then was glad he was there. So everybody was different. Well, and, and the people who were there were Marines, and I think Marines would say, You're, there's something in your heart. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, if you join any branch, I'm sure, and of course, in my case, especially the Marines, uh, you know, you want to put your training to use. It's like if you're a fireman and you train to fight fires, you don't necessarily want to see buildings on fire. But if if there's a if there's a fire, you want to you know employ your deploy your training and and, and do what you uh, uh, trained and practiced to do. Um, do you think history will look back on Desert Storm and say we made the right decisions? Oh, I do. Uh, uh, absolutely. Uh, and it's interesting, of course, I teach history and I'm really into this. I was there and a lot of Monday morning quarterbacks at the time in 1991 said, you should have gone to Baghdad, you should have gone on. And, and uh, I think the President Bush at the time, Bush 41, made absolutely the right decision. Our mission was to liberate Kuwait and stop there. Uh, and of course, ironically, his son, 
uh, 12 years later, uh, did uh, go on to Baghdad. And that's a, that's a different story, different war. And you know what? I got to stop right here because we are out of time. But when we return, we're going to continue our conversation focusing on a post 9 11 world. So please stay with us. <laughs>